Okay, welcome back. Thank you for uh, taking the time to view these videos, as always. And um, we have cause for celebration, in a sense. We've accomplished over the past years uh, during COVID and um, lately in the past months, um, some pretty extraordinary uh, things, all in part, um, well, mostly, uh, let's give credit where credit is due, and that is to the advent and the use of 3D printing. This uh, 3D printing is making it possible for us to innovate beyond our expectations. Uh, and the example that we're seeing here is uh, related to that. It's not entirely because of 3D printing, but we're looking at now, having received the um, uh, hex grid uh, star field, which is a large print of vinyl, uh, and hence there is a problem. Uh, you know what it is. It's the reflection. Uh, from the light source. So we're trying to deal with that in various ways uh, with indirect lighting, uh, which you can see is is working, uh, but there are two hot zones uh, which we weren't which we hoped uh, we could deal with, but actually that's as much as we can do for now. This is a large eight foot by four foot print. and uh, the quality um, aside from this recent uh, um, order that we received from this company that we're working with, uh, there are some scratches on the vinyl, but be that as it may, it's still a good print, and um, the scratches can be look they look like maybe passing meteors. Okay, um, so what we're looking at top left corner is the HDMI camcorder. Top right corner is uh, from directly above, hence the compressed view of it uh, of the Microsoft Life Cam, and uh, the Microsoft Life Cam is showing. Uh, more reflection uh, because of its position, which is fixed, uh, again, on that track lighting uh, that's above the game table. Now, as you know, uh, or not, but we've tried uh, to lower the game table to the floor uh, in many cases uh, so that the uh, life cam in its cinematic uh, 16 by 9 view, if you will, uh, could see more of the playing area. We don't want to do that again and try and move the game table to the floor because it's a problem. Now, if somebody were to invent a, uh, a pneumatic table that would allow us to get uh, to uh, within six inches of the floor and thus in its pneumatic operation, uh, air pressure uh, also be raised up when we need to, that would be helpful. Well, uh, that's... That's not something I can do. Uh, I would love to have it done. And to that, I would have to consult with those who uh, know these things far better than I as a user. Uh, this thing of a pneumatic raising and lowering table would have to be engineered. And, uh, well, I'm a technical writer and I can write about it, but uh, working on it is a little bit beyond even me as a MacGyver type of person, uh, my ability to do so. So uh, we are celebrating. Because why? Uh, because the 8x4 uh, hex grid is uh, a remarkable accomplishment uh, for this game, even if we don't use the entire size of it. And also, it should be noted that uh, when we considered this, we thought 8x5 convention table. Well, 8x5 is not a standard off-the-shelf size for any printer. And by going to 8x4, sure, we said, what is it, what's the real difference? You're losing 6 inches on one side and 6 inches on the other side. Is that really important? I mean, it averages out to be like 2.5 hexes, uh, top and bottom, if you will, the long sides of, of now the game table. So 8x4 was decided, and uh, it's a lot easier for everybody and 8x4 is a standard sheet of anything from a hardware store. You can't get 8x5 sheets of anything. Uh, 8x4. So hence the reason we've got that. So this is Hex Command Starships. Um, and people say, well, how, well, how is Hex Command Starships? Or actually, uh, uh, years ago, somebody would say, how does this compare to Hex Command Raptors? Well, long story, uh, Hex Command Raptors was our air combat game uh, rules that we started working on the, in the 90s. Uh, actually, um, we've got to be a little bit more accurate than that. It was after we developed the Hex Command system 
uh, in the early 2000s, and we jumped right into air combat because we are, you know, air combat people as well as ground combat people. And we wanted to see an air combat game uh, that worked correctly. In other words, uh, that anybody, uh, say, uh, 12 years or older can play without having to actually be a pilot. A lot of the rules out there, uh, free or not, uh, they don't approach the game as a game. They approach it as a simulation. And that's fine if you want to play a simulation, but we don't. We want to play a game, which is to say simple, fast, and economical, as well as expandable, modular. And that's the, the, the catch-all phrase for all the stuff we do uh, with Hex Command. So Hex Command Raptors was an air, air, air combat game. We thought about jets. We thought about props, of course. Uh, and uh, whereas a lot of people would say, you need a huge space to play an uh, air combat game, don't you? And the fact of the matter is, let's do an example. An example would be of, say, we have a B-17. And this B-17 model on the game table is uh, positioned in the middle of the table. And all the fighters, say BF-109s, are attacking it. And the traditional thought is that the uh, B-17 moves from one end to the other end of the game table. Uh, or side to side, or something of that nature. At any rate, the B-17 moves. And the truth is, it doesn't. Because of the fact we're dealing with relative time and space, the only thing that moves are the fighter jets themselves. Uh, the aircraft attacking it. They're the only things that move. See, the B-17 is already moving, but in respect to the attackers, it's stationary. So the stationary object in the middle of the game table is the B-17. For us, it's the space station or in a capital ship situation where one capital ship is assaulting, boarding another one. Uh, say a frigate is a, a, is a uh, uh, going to attach itself to a cutter or something of that nature in space. Uh, a cruiser. And it's going to capture it, just like Star Wars. So that is what it ha how it happens. The main object of the thing, of the scenario, doesn't move. It stays mi in the middle of the game board. Everything happening around it moves because it's relative time and space. So in Hex Command Starships, it's a little throwback to the way things used to be, say with Silent Death or uh, Full Thrust, whereas everybody has ships that actually move. Why? Because it's fighter combat. So you could say, well, you just talked about a B-17, that's not a fighter. Right. So call that a capital ship. The, the B-17 uh, doesn't move because it's being attacked by these little fighters. But now you have a scenario where all the little fighters are attacking each other. It's a big dogfight. Now it's a little different, right? Now they're all interacting with each other, trying to evade each other, trying to get on each other's six backside so they can get a decent shot, a better shot, whereas a head-to-head, -head, you know, kind of dangerous. So that's the kind of difference. Now, throwing back to those kinds of rules is Hex Command Starships, where we have fighters and maybe some larger starships engaged in combat. Now, I understand there's a lot of hemming and hawing and all, you know, reality and, and all this kind of stuff is going to muck up the works. Yes, it's true. Um, but again, it's kind of relative. Why? Because uh, the ships themselves, armed with missiles, torpedoes, and whatever, also armed with beam weapons, or, or also armed with kinetic weapons. In other words, they're actually firing solid projectiles. So we have to have contingencies for beam weapons and lasers, pulse laser, uh, particle projection cannons, right? They're firing encased beams, uh, encased energy, uh, in pulses. So you got your pew, 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 right? And uh, then there are those that are firing an actual solid shot, uh, a bolt, uh, of even a, a, a BB, uh, a marble uh, is firing at an opposing ship. And, and where are those things going once they're fired? They keep going, right? Remember, this is space. Until there's a gravitational effect on an object, those little projectiles are going to fly potentially forever. 
They will reach another solar system, another galaxy, another universe. As long as no effect happens on them, those little projectiles are going to go on forever. So, that brings up another thing. Shields. In space, if you plan on navigating without going into hyperspace, and even so in hyperspace, maybe there's an issue. I don't know yet. Uh, you're going to run into things. Or things are going to run into you. <coughs> Excuse me. So... You have to have shielding. Well, what is shielding? Well, won't get into that. But let's just say shielding exists in one way, one form or another. It envelops the craft in a deflector capability. So a solid shot uh, is going to not bounce off. You know, it's not going to go to the shield and go doing, right? It's going to be deflected by the shield uh beam energy we don't really know uh the physics behind that um hypothetically if it's an energy field around a craft where's my craft give me a craft here's a craft 3d printed so an energy field around this craft uh a beam weapon of some kind is a is approaching it because the envelopment of the craft could be a sphere all the way around it to a large degree or small degree, depending on the power being spent. That beam is going to be approaching and start to dissipate on its way to hitting it. It'll become like, you know, a, it's say it's a drop of water. Now it's becoming less of a drop, more of a mist. And by the time it gets through that shielding, because it potentially does get through it, it becomes very dissipated. So shields for energy weapons are dissipation devices. Uh, and the reason we're talking about this is because we need to consider these parameters when developing the rules. And uh, basically, is it a complicated type of thing to legislate? Not really. It's basically armor. And again, we have our three uh, categories. We have a movement, right, M. We have a defense, D. And we have a combat, C. But there's so many weapons, right? Remember Hex Command uh, Nova? Remember the mechs, right? They have all these weapons. Some do, some don't. They have she they have rockets and missiles and PPCs and lasers and pulse lasers and machine guns. And wow, how do you deal with all that? Well, short answer is you don't. The short answer is just like a chit on a board game. It has a combat value. The whole ship has a combat value. Uh, remember, well dating myself, but um, Panzer Blitz and all the other types of games from Avalon Hill and such, they had a combat value. They had a movement value. Some of them had a, a defense value indicator for armor. Those are exactly the same things that we have in the Hex Command system. Not for gunpowder, right? right? Not for a regiment of infantry. Uh, but we're getting to that point too, right? Uh, I mean, why not? So we'll get to that. But at any rate, in these so-called modern era things, Movement, defense, and combat. As combat takes a damage, the combat value overall suffers until it gets repaired. Okay, we're going we're going through but a lot of the rules here because we always say, "Can you repair it?" Well, who did we see in movies that repaired anything? In the so-called cruiser type bomber, heavy bomber, Millennium Falcon, they would be able to fix things. They had the ability of running around the ship and fixing things. A fighter, you're in the cockpit, you can't get out and fix the craft. Same with an aircraft uh, 20th century, uh, you know, prop plane. You can't get out and fix it, right? In a B-17, if you had damage, it might be possible, hypothetically, if it was inside the fuselage, move to where the damage is and try and fix it. Uh, or, in the case of a B-52, uh, we, we saw... Uh, uh, Major Khan or Kong, I forget now, uh, crawl into the uh, nuclear bomb bay and fix the bomb bay doors and hence rode the nuclear bomb to its altitude and, and explode it. Okay, end of world. Okay, funny, great movie, right? Dr. Strangelove. Um, but that's, he fixed it. But you can't do that in a fighter. You can't, you can't, you know, 
once it's broke, maybe there's a, a robotic way of fixing. Maybe there's a little robot, an R2-D2, that can maybe stabilize something, right? Hey, R2, can you fix that? Well, his little thingy comes out and goes, and grabs on something and, okay, right? Well, that was wishful thinking. So, in the fighter combat situation, uh, you're not going to be able to repair much. Uh, maybe you can rechannel the energy from one weapon to another, if that's the case. But without getting into too much problems, that is to say, too much detail. In a fighter combat situation, eh, the most you're going to be able to do is just continue on until, you know, your ultimate demise. Or you leave, which is more than likely the case, right? You never, ever, regardless of what we see in movies, uh, until Luke Skywalker says, you know, get out of there, you can't do anymore. Uh, you're not going to fly to the death, right? You, you, you're not. You, you want to survive. Okay, so you're damaged, you're flying. Eh, I can't do anything, guys. I'm busted up. Go home, right? Go back to the so-called carrier or planet if you can land. So those are the parameters. And a lot of that stuff has been immensely, uh, exponentially simplified uh, for use in a game. A, a, a fun, a happy kind of a situation where people are getting together maybe over a couple of uh, uh, beverages and uh, enjoying a little beer and pretzel starship combat game. And uh, in the case of X Command, that's what uh, we are doing. Uh, and so uh, we have completed that. Uh, we have the rules. We are in continual testing, it seems. Even when we play the games, we seem to be testing. And the rules themselves, the game itself is card driven, which is to say the cards uh, can provide uh, random events and or uh, other things that can happen uh, during the game to yourself or to other people that are playing. And in the, the spaceship game, I'm sorry, in the, uh, the space station game, it's basically an adventure game and you're on the space station uh, uh, performing missions and, and getting points for all the missions you accomplish. Well, nothing ever goes as planned. So things happen on the space station that are deadly, destructive, horrible, and uh, funny. Uh, uh, humor. We try to inject some humor into the into the situation, and it's it's uh, looking pretty good. So there we are. Sorry about again the longevity of me staring at you and talking uh, without anything happening. Uh, but that needed to be said because we're ready to uh, begin uh, having people over. And playing this game and uh, we won't obviously do it live uh, because again these kinds of games we can't really broadcast and have people play online uh, it's difficult uh, because for, first of all this is an 8x4 game table you can't capture the whole game table uh, with multiple cameras of course yes and that's what we do but in this case and uh, we're going to forego that attempt and we're going to just record these as they're being played on the 8x4 game table and then post the games edited of course so they're not so boring like this video and uh then make it worth it uh so that other people can see how to do this uh so in conclusion i also want to say that the space uh, space station uh construction is done uh it turned out to be m way better than i expected uh foam core was not used um it was all mat board construction as i mentioned earlier so that was the key to figuring out how to make uh, it easy to manufacture, that is to say cut and uh, do the graphics and paste the graphics on the walls and such. And again, 3D printing of the greebles, 3D printing of the uh, scatter terrain, uh, chairs, tables, uh, aliens, uh, 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 engines, uh, and all kinds of other uh, very cool uh, things you would see. Uh, Star Trek, Star Wars, or whatever, a Babylon 5 or, or Battlestar Galactica uh, in a space station. All right, so there it is. And uh, we'll come back with other news and updates um, as, as we progress with, progress with Hex Command Starships.